Hello everyone and welcome to the Deep Blue Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deep Blue Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode um, 196. Today is Saturday, um, August 18th, 2017, and I'm glad you could join me today. It looks like I'm, what is it, looking pretty classy right now, but I am disgusting. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Well, it was in the case where I had a chill morning, then in the afternoon I had a massage, and then I walked to Starbucks and got some iced coffee, which is gone now, because I think I drunk it all. <laughs> Walking back from the Starbucks, <laughs> which isn't that far away, kids. <laughs> so, um, since I knew I was going to be recording outside, I skipped the shower so that I could shower after I was done. Because <laughs> it is hot, hot, hot. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing high 90s. Um, but I'm just like slick and gross and ugh. But you can't tell. You just have found out. <laughs> um, and honestly, I'm probably in like an awkward spot right now in my project, but such is life. I might be able to finish it, finish the row in front of you, hopefully, and call it good. Because I realized after I pressed go that I was probably in an awkward spot. Let's see. Where are we? What is this place? What are we trying to accomplish here? You know what? I'm pretty close to the beginning of a row, so we're just gonna roll with what we've got. <laughs> I'm not halfway yet, so here, here's halfway. I'm doing a pearl black row. This isn't going. But this, um, what is it? I did give uh, my Rock the Casbah, which is a Cindy Garland pattern, a little bit of love this week. Just a little bit, as you do. Um, so tomorrow, the 19th, is the end of Stash Dash. Or wait, tomorrow the 20th is the end of Stash Dash. Um, today, what was it? There was no way I was going to finish anything before then. So it was sort of the case for what is it? I did put a pretty good burn on my boxy, but um, it's it wasn't enough. I, I still have like 200, well, no. Less than 200, but close to 200 grams left to go on that guy. So this um, probably was closer to being completed. So had I put a good burn on this, maybe I would have been done. I don't know. I don't care that much. There was no way I was going to make it to the next level. Um, I did make it to 10K, though, so yay! Three-ply fingering for the win! <laughs> And two ply lace suede and all of that other fun stuff. So this is Rock the Casbah. Um, the last time I showed you guys, I had just finished a bead row. I then did the pearl back and then knit across one more time, and now I'm to the third row. Um, what would it be? It'd be the case where I'm putting a little border on this beaded area, and then I'll have another solid blue section. So that should be some pretty, or whatever. It's going to be pretty easy knitting for a while. I'm not sure whether or not I'll launch into another bead pattern around, um, what is it, another bead pattern before I go into the next mosaic section? Not sure. I'm sure if we looked at the pattern we'd know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it is coming along nicely. Um, it's nice, whatever. Aside from the bead rows, it's really easy knitting. Um, and aside from the mosaic, it's even retreat knitting, so... <laughs> As you do. So, I've been still happy with how the pattern's been going in the whole bit. I don't know, let's see. Oh, it looks like the other thing has been charted. Interesting. I'm guessing that there isn't going to be another bead section for a while, actually, so that's interesting. It looks like I'm going to launch into the next mosaic section without beads. 
but I don't know, it's a mystery. If we looked at the pattern, we would know. <laughs> the finished object would tell. So that's really nice. It's um, The yarn is Stunning String Studio um, in the Blue Calypso and Fog colorways. Um, really gorgeous stuff, really enjoy working with it. Um, Hopefully, they'll be showing up to DFW Fiber Fest because it's probably worth getting some more. I could order it online. Or... It's just a lot of fun to pick it out in person. And not very many people have, like, sweater quantity amounts of every single color you could imagine, so they do a good job. The other thing that has got in love this week is my boxy. Um, it all fits in my large wedge, which I just find amusing when I hear Amy Beth talking about, oh yeah, no, not sure you can fit a whole sweater <laughs> in her whatever, fit a whole sweater in the sweater bag. <laughs> I was like, I got a giant ass sweater in the, <laughs> in the sweater bag. So what would it be? I think since I talked to you guys last week, I redid the neckline um, with um, the right decreases, so I haven't decreased fast enough. Um, and then I did a firm bind off, so it's pretty solid there now, which I think is actually probably a good thing. Um, and what I am working on now is a little sleeve. Um, a very little sleeve. <laughs> um, but that, I think, that that is by design, though. Um, let me eliminate the super grassy bits on that. Um, because it does go out to my elbow, so that's, like, we're looking at, like, it's a pretty broad sweater, it's, so it's a little bit shy of my elbow, and all I need this to do is to get past it. Um, which this does admirably, admirably, whatever, it's really hot. <laughs> um, so, um, it would be the case where, what would it be, I'm probably at the point where I need to work another decrease, more than likely and just sort of zhuzh everything um, what would it be. I don't like magic looping all that much, so this has been maybe a little bit annoying, but um, this was my unit of work at knit night the other night, so meh. Um, so this boxy is a, ho it is the v-neck boxy by Hohi Lukitelli. Um, this is a, um, what is it? It is out of um, Nettle Grove, which is a Plymouth Yarn brand thing. Um, and it has been fairly fun to work with because it, like, I guess the best way I can describe it is that it's a non-wool yarn that doesn't make you regret not using wool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has a very nice hand, um, good shine, and really good colors. It's delightfully heathered, probably due to all of the different um, varieties of fiber that are integrated into it. I swear there's like a bird. <laughs> it sounds like there's a bird chirping, but maybe it's something else. I don't know. Um, so it has linen, cotton, nettle, and silk in whatever, that order. Um, so it's super duper drapey, um, but still nice to work with, if that makes any sense. Um, what would it be? Do, 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 do. So I was a little bit nervous about sleeve length, but I sort of forgot that the stripe sequence that I was doing was actually going to take up a pretty significant amount of um, distance, row gauge, whatever, as I have like this fixed little stripey pattern that I'm doing. Um, the next thing is to 
whatever near where I'm at right now and then I'm going to put on a like garter cuff. Um, the pattern calls for like two by two ribbing um, but I really like the way the blue looks in garter so I'm going with that. The primary thing is just to have it like lay flat. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a split cuff or a split with it. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. Um, and that would just be like my own little modification there. It's so weird. <laughs> um, so it is coming along nicely. Um, what would it be? I, um, what was it? I think I'd forgotten to show you guys how much progress I had made, but I did make some very good progress on the body this week, so you can see my little dangly dolphin stitch marker is down there. I'm probably, I think I'm five more rows or something like that before I will um, launch into the next draping sequence. Um, but pretty, pretty good progress, all things considered. So got, got some good rows done worked through most of the ball of yarn, which is nice. Um, what would it be? I'm now down to two of the sandcastle and two of the um, purple parrot. Um, I'll just go with that. Um, so it does look like I'm going to have quite a bit of the purple parrot left, which is sort of why I'm thinking I want to um, I was thinking about doing a split hem on the very bottom and just knitting until I was out of the blue. I think it'll be pretty decent. Um, <laughs> like a little teeny weeny sleeve. <laughs> In proportion to the rest of the sweater, there's hardly any of it. <laughs> but I think three, I think three quarter sleeve will be fine. I don't know, I was all sorts of pondering. So I have used some of the blue, so I'm probably past the 200 gram mark. And then I still have two pretty hefty skeins here. So hopefully it will be long enough. <laughs> um, pretty much what I've noticed is that I've gotten a um, full striping sequence per ball of yarn. So. Let's see. So, one ish for the top, two ish for this one, three ish for that. Um, so, having two more balls, I think, will result in it being about right. Um, and they'll probably do the other sleeve while I'm here, and that way I just know for a fact that all of the rest of the yarn is going into the body for my sanity. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to think about other finishing steps at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just want to know that everything that's in is going to be, or everything that's left is going to be going to the body and all adjust as needed. <sighs> it's pretty coffee-ish water. <laughs> I didn't do anything on the socks this week. Um, despite it being hot, I haven't really felt like dealing with it, so, yeah, whatever. Um, so, um, with respect to spinning, what I have behind me is, um, what would it be? The bunches of spinning that I've done recently. Um, some of it I've already shown, but I just sort of grabbed the whole handful that was on the drying rack. Um, what was it? I ended up doing a big washing party, whatever, last week? Whatever, sometime. I, I got everything um, started. Um, and then I tried to intelligently separate everything to make sure that everything um, played nicely together. Um, so sadly, I'm still trying to get my red nest skeins to stop being, stop turning the wash water red, and I think it's just like going to be 
continually washing it until victory, sadly. Um, so when I went upstairs, I quick grabbed them and actually put them in. Well, sadly in Texas, when you turn on the cold water tap, what ends up coming out is as disappointing as when you're in Michigan in the winter and you turn on the warm water tap. <laughs> both, both put out lukewarm water. <laughs> so, so just like put that, put that in context as you will. But it'd be the case where the, the cold water ain't cold. So, but it was the case when I put in like hot water that, that like bled like stuff like bled like pigs. I'm like, ah. Um, not sure, aside from repeated washing, because it isn't like the colors are changing, I think it's just a lot of excess dye. Um, but I don't know when it's going to end. <laughs> but, oh, such is life. I don't have that to show you guys. So this, oops, is all of the recent spinning. Um, what would it be? This is about 2,000 yards of, or whatever, this was my, whatever, 1,932 yards or meters of singles. Um, all together in one giant fluffy group. Um, so I still have, um, what would it be? Some samples left to spin, um, but I probably am not going to. I, don't know. I think I have other other samples I want to get through, um, and perhaps the most amusing of the bunch is my longest term spinning project that I seldom speak of. Um, let's see what do I want to do. So this guy was a little warm-up poony. Um, I left that as singles. It has like a sort of coppery sparkle in it. Um, I think I did manage to blue it a little bit because I did put it in with my more teal skeins. So, well. Um, then what I have here are my striped bat samples. So I have my um, a wrapped yarn, um, and then different varieties of, um, what is it, different varieties, <coughs> here, that should be more workable. So these are, or what is it, all of this is from the same bat, but then spun in very different ways. Um, so this was, this was a layered bat, so this skein right here was actually the first one I spun that got lost for a while, I showed it. Um, right after SSK and then couldn't find it again. Um, and I turned this, I do believe, into a two-ply. Yeah, it, this I just two-plied it on itself. This guy was I split everything apart and then um, <laughs> where I pulled the bat apart and then chain-plied it so it actually is a gradient despite the prep. <laughs> Um, and then this guy was a marl where I basically, um, what was it, turned it, did I z-strip this one? I might have z-strip this one. Um, and then I plied it with a zephyr, so it has big yardage on this one. This one's actually enough to make a proper project with. It's 400 yards. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So... Really gorgeous, and actually I'm really happy with how balanced it turned out, despite using a um, core, um, what was it, or plying it with something that was already plied itself. So this one should be fun. Um, it's a little bit, I think it muted out a little bit, which I appreciate. Um, the white is not quite so stark anymore. So, whatever, so that's two ounces of fiber there. Um, Then I had my two ounces of, um, what was it, um, singles done up several different ways. So 
what would it be? Where this would, this biggest one is my normal default. And then, what is it? We've got woolen. And then these two are spinning more woolen. So these are more long draw woolen prep, woolen spun guys here. So two ounces there of the acid green, all singles. Um, I'll probably end up making swatches with these because it was sort of magical in the class to feel Jillian swatches. So, um, and I sort of need to figure out what in the world I'm doing with all of these spinning samples where I don't have enough to do anything with them. All right, then the next set with everything being all washed and prettified is um, this is my diagonally dizzed skein which is how I ended up spinning my other bat. This guy was a gradient of sorts made that way. Um, this guy here was I think a gradient made a different way. This guy here was trying to mix things up as much as humanly possible, um, maybe also with worsted spinning. These guys are still pretty crazy. Um, and then this biggest one um, was a giant roll log of doom. So I, or what was it? So this one was one where I was trying to maximize the color mixing as much as possible. <laughs> maximize the color. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So this is all from the same two ounce thing. You can see how all of the cool different ways of handling the color turned out. And this still is a pretty sizable amount of yarn. Um, but all done somewhat differently, I suppose. Um, and then I had my Oscar the Grouch. So I had treated this guy fairly roughly, but it's still very soft and fluffy. Um, I ended up just whacking on to my original um, core spun um, guy. So this is all core spun. Looks like maybe a little bit of thread is falling out of it. Um, this is the wild one that looks like Oscar the Grouch. Um, so this is probably a bit more than an ounce, um, and I left it as singles in order to sort of maximize the yardage. Very strange one. Whatever, got to try it. <laughs> um, my fractal guys, one of the, this guy's still pretty, still pretty twisty. Um, but this is my chain plaid leftovers because I spun it too thin here. Um, and then this is one of the fractal ply structures. So I have two more fractal constructions left. Um, this guy here is, um, I think, eight parts to one part fractal. So it's really fun. Um, more of that acid gray. I'm probably not a big acid green person, but I do like the blues and grays with it. Um, really cool how things turned out there. And then my two um, bats that I ended up making, um, what would be one more midnight colors and one more purples and reds, um, which I core spun and then thread plied. And it is fun with the thread plier rather like how that ended up turning out and how it seems to catch the light in a cool way. Um, I don't know if I can properly show how cool it is. Like trying to get out the oversaturated parts of the skein. But I was thinking that this purple one, this purple and red one was going to be a really big hot mess, but I like it. <laughs> It was a little crazy pants for me, even though I made the bat myself. Um, but it still has some really good fluff, um, and it was fun to thread ply. So it may be the case where I actually get some more thread to thread ply 
width because I think that would be cool. And this is probably like fingering to spurt weight in the end between the two of them. Now this is probably my shameful project. <laughs> um, so this was actually spunky eclectic fiber, I think, Coopworth, um, that I ended up getting in Abby Frankemont's class. Um, and so the point of it was spinning for knitting. Um, so it was the case where I got the fiber, I sampled a bunch of ply structures. Um, what is it? That that stuff, whatever, that yarn is in pretty rough shape right now, sadly. Um, and then I decided to do a three ply um, with it. Um, I spun it all on, or what is it? I spun all the singles on my KCL Woodworks um, convertible spindle. Um, and that's the only project that I've had on that stupid thing, sadly. Um, so now, now it's open again, so that's better. Um, but I didn't work on it very much, and so as a result, it took a very long time to do. Um, and now the next step would be to knit a swatch so you could like calculate how much fiber you actually need if you wanted to make a bigger project with it. But it did turn out really gorgeous, though. I wouldn't have, like, it'd be the case where it sort of has this natural oatmeal color to it, and then these sections which are magenta, and the three-ply just really highlights what is it? You can do, I'm, I'm always impressed with how much fun you can have with like a two-tone fiber where one of them is the natural color and the other one is just like a solid version, whatever, some solid pop. And so what ends up happening is that you get like this glorious tonal thing out the end, which I really like. Um, so this is probably about an ounce. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the yardage ended up being, um, but this has been going on for way too long, so it matches my shirt. So this was whatever, this was the class I took to celebrate my 29th birthday, so <laughs> two years, well, I don't know, whatever. It was not last Fiber Fest, but the one before. So this also deserves a swatch. So it is sort of getting me to the point where I'm like, okay, for these classes, I probably should, whatever, put together a notebook where I have like a swatch of the yarn I made and some of the yarn that I made and I'm, I'm probably not going to save the fiber but just sort of like debriefing on what in the world it was I was supposed to learn. Um, and probably that involves like getting a big three ring notebook and like the little sleeves and like you know, just getting a bit organized with all of the spinning. But this one took, <sighs> took so long. Um, I did have a really good getting to know you with my spindle, um, and I definitely decided it, excuse me, needed to stop like pushing. So this part is done. Um, we'll see how long it takes for me to knit this watch. I'm sure it's not going to be a big deal, but... <laughs> taking my time. So happy with how it turned out. Um, I did ply it on my wheel because I just wanted it to be over, as you do. Um, and then some of it is end plied on itself, um, and that was just for practical reasons of trying to keep everything contained. Um, because one section of the fiber was just way bigger. I needed to split it into thirds at the beginning. but. Really happy, like that's really cool how it turned out though. So as you do. Um am I going to be spinning for a sweater soon? I'm not sure. <sighs> Depends on how much stash guilt I feel. <laughs> now the last one is um what would it be? My spin the bin that I think is supposed was supposed to happen this month. Um I do believe if I'm counting all of my fiber correctly. Um, and this is the Dawning Dreams bat. Um, really super duper happy with how this turned out. It is really stinking fluffy. Um, and then like maybe like a little bit messy of a skein this way, but pretty gorgeous. Um, 
So I was planning on thread plying it like I did the other stuff, but um, I decided I needed to mix the colors up a bit more, and so I ended up plying it back on itself. And I'm really, so this results in something that somewhere, I don't know if it poofed in the wash, um, but it was um, 180 yards, it was like 4.4 ounces, so I started with 3 ounces of bat, and so that means there's a pretty decent amount of the zephyr um, incorporated in this as well. But it is really stinking fluffy. Um, but it was sort of the case where I was looking at the singles and it wasn't color mixing enough for me. Anything that is the tealish color is probably nylon or the milk fiber. And then the wool is actually the darker blue and the brown and the white as well. So it's just the case where I sort of wanted, like it was the case where the textures of the fiber weren't, what would it be? It was the case where it was sort of split in color and in stripe because this was a striped bat with several stripes in it. So I dizzed it diagonally, um, incorporating as much as I could trying to mix up the colors a lot. And then um, core spun it. Um, and you can see some of the core in places. Let's see if we can even show. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, but because it already has a decent amount of white in it anyways, it's not a big deal. So really happy with how it turned out. Um, I sort of what is it? Want to make like, um, what was it? Like a cowl with it. Um, I tried to make it to punch up the fluff factor as much as possible. So it is super duper soft and lofty. So I'm thinking that it make a really cute Mobius cowl. Um, and that would just sort of highlight the stripiness of it all and all that other fun stuff. I don't tend to wear a lot of cowls, but this one is a lot of fun. So, happy with how this one So this is a spin the bin yarn, um, and this is what got me over the edge for stash dash. So this was what made it, made me up to the 10,000 meters. So, really happy with how it turned out in the end. Um, very fun yarn. Um, and that is all of the finished spinning. Obviously I have talked about some of it before, but now that it's washed, I think it shows its character a little bit better. So what am I working on now? Another bin fiber. Um, so I put my five ounces of Julie Spins, 60% BFL, um, 40% um, Tessa, I think it's Tessa Silk. I didn't bring the card out with me. Um, onto the wheel. Um, I knew, I have spun this blend before, I've spun one other thing of Julie Spins before, so I knew it wanted to be stinking fine. I decided what I wanted to do was actually, um, make a three-ply ply yarn with it. Let's bring it into the frame. So, um, the camera is probably lying. Um, this looks blue, like, you know, like Molly Blue. Um, it's actually seriously purple. <laughs> it, um, there, there definitely is some blue in it. Um, but this section right here should be very purple and it isn't showing up on the camera like that. This section right here, um, would probably be more on the pinker. This is like sort of a, a darker hot pink. Um, and that it also has a decent amount of orange in it, which is hidden at the moment. So this is dyed as a gradient. Um, and then this is all of the orange that I'm working through so far, and then this is what I have spun at this point. So some parts are actually light, whatever, pretty light on the dye, so that's just making for a lighter section, and then there are blotches of 
purple and pink that are showing up as it sort of transitions from color to color. Um, but the plan is to chain ply the whole thing. Um, and it's spinning up pretty fine. Um, I think it just sort of depends on my mood, how fine it ends up getting. But pretty gorgeous stuff. Um, I didn't bring my scale with me to try quantifying a little bit better how far I am in. I'm sure I'll be depressed. <laughs> This is going to be a longer term project for me. Um, I am spinning it on the ludicrous ratio. Um, it's pretty fine. Um, but I'm sure that this is going to probably take me at least the rest of the month to get all the singles done. And then it'll probably be annoying as I'm applying it, but not the end of the world. Um, hopefully I can make hmm. hopefully I can make everything um, fit onto one bobbin because I would like to be able to use a fast ratio when I'm applying it because it'll probably need quite a bit in order to make things work out. So um, yeah. Um, Whatever. It's really nice working with Julie Spin stuff. It's probably a different way of doing a gradient than I'm used to, but it's an adventure. Um, it should result in some really fun yarn. Um, definitely planning on making some sort of lace shawl with it, as you do, um, to emphasize the gradient and that sort of thing. Um, we'll have to figure out whatever. It'll probably be the case where purple towards the top and yellow towards the bottom, as you do. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about, but I did talk a pretty decent amount today. Makes up for last week, probably. <laughs> so, let's see. I should be able to record next week. Do, 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 do. No disrupted schedule there, so that should be the 26th. Um, sort of heading into the point where there may there may be some disruption just based on travel. Um, whatever. There's been talk of rock climbing trips, so it's making it a little bit harder to predict when it is that I'm going to be in town or out of town. We shall see how it goes. Um, I sort of like the travel dates fixed so that I can always plan around them and go from there. But yeah, I'm not the one personally planning some of these trips, so whatever. Um, perhaps it will be refreshing to to leave the heat of Texas. So I'm not complaining too much. Um, I think with that, um, I hope you guys have a lovely week. Oh, I do remember now. See, I couldn't quite say it. Couldn't quite say it. Um, what is it? So, just for personal personal curiosity, um, would it be if you found me recently via iTunes? Could you like go to the Ravelry group and say hi? <laughs> um. So it was the case for, like, what is it? I'm I'm just personally curious. Um, I don't really have like a good way of like looking to see if people have um, discovered the podcast. Like, I can go to iTunes and see that some of my episodes are more popular than others. Um, but there's no counts. Um, <laughs> and the service I'm using to um, allow iTunes to let you upload. Um, is like really janky. Um, it's just the way it is, I guess. Um, so it's it's rather primitive. Like you you would have to reload the page for every single episode. Like there are better ways of doing stats, guys. Come on. Um, but I would really appreciate it if you could like just go say hi in the thread and like whatever. 
it would be helpful for me just to understand, like, what would it be since I am paying money to use the janky service, knowing that it's actually whatever, doing things for viewership and that sort of thing. Um, what is it? I know that a lot of you guys watch on YouTube, so. <laughs> Makes it easier in some ways. Um, Google has much better, like, tracking and analytics and that sort of thing. So, feel free, pop, like, pop in the episode thread and just say hi, so, like, I know you guys exist. Um, I would appreciate that. So, with that, um, I hope you guys have a lovely week. And I look forward to talking to you guys next week. So take care, guys. Bye-bye.